Hello friends, I am Dr. Deepak Agarwal, Professor in Neurosurgery at the All India Institute of Medical Sciences, New Delhi. Today I will be talking about severe head injury. Now what is severe head injury? Severe head injury is patients having a head injury which is very severe. So there are three grades of head injury. One is mild, moderate and then severe. And there is a grading system based on Glasgow comma scale or GCS. So Without going into technicalities, what is important to remember is that you should always be aware of the GCS of a patient while communicating to a doctor for second opinion. So what is the aim or objectives in managing head injuries, especially severe head injuries? What happens at the time of impact in that very nanosecond that cannot be changed. Why? Because brain cells or neurons are the only cells in the body which do not regenerate. So whatever cell dies, dies forever. And that is the reason any injury to the brain leads to irreversible loss to some part of the brain. In severe head injury, obviously the loss is more. And coming back to the original point, whatever impact which results in injury to the brain cells, that cannot be undone. What we can do as doctors and neurosurgeons is prevent secondary brain injury. Now you might ask what is secondary brain injury? Secondary brain injury is preventing the bad effects or the side effects of raised intracranial pressure. If you imagine the head of a person being like a pressure cooker, you understand that it is completely closed on all sides and the only difference with the pressure cooker being that the pressure cooker has a vessel. So if the pressure inc inside increases, the vessel can be blown to maintain a constant pressure. However, this doesn't happen with the brain. There is no outlet for the pressure. And this is the reason when the pressure inside increases due to any cause, the brain gets cooked inside its own head. So it is very important to deal with the secondary brain injury to prevent damage to whatever live cells are there in the brain. So what are the principles of management? Now this is the most important part. Principle of management is not a neurosurgeon looking after the patient. Principle of management is dependent on the initial care of the patient which involves managing airway, managing the breathing and the circulation. Now you may ask what is the relevance of airway, breathing and circulation in head injury patients. The two biggest killers in head injury patients is hypoxia or otherwise known as lack of oxygen and hypercarbia or an increase in carbon dioxide. So if oxygen doesn't go into the body and again to the brain, brain cells will die out in less than three minutes. So it is extremely important that we continue giving oxygen to a patient to prevent this hypoxia. The other thing, carbon dioxide. You may be amazed to know that carbon dioxide is the most potent vasodilator known to man. What is a vasodilator? Vasodilator is a drug or a chemical which causes the vessels anywhere in the body to dilate. And when they dilate, the volume of the blood inside will obviously increase. So if we increase the carbon dioxide, there will be more blood inside the brain compounding the already raised intracranial pressure. And the biggest problem today in our society is that when a severe head injury patient comes to any nursing home, clinic or a smaller hospital, the nurses and doctors panic and they say that we do not have neurosurgical facilities, please take the patient somewhere else. This is the worst which can be done for a patient. Even in the most primitive health setup, the airway management, the breathing management and the circulation management can be done and should be done. Only after stabilizing of the patient with all these three steps should a patient be referred to a neurosurgeon. And whenever you send a patient from a smaller center to a higher center or transfer the patient, airway control is the most important. You should not send them just on room air. Why? Because an unconscious patient is very liable to aspirate or take the vomit inside the airway because the reflexes are impaired. So it is important that they always have an airway control before being shifted to any other facility. Now the third thing which is the most common question which is asked to me is what is the outcome of these patients because that is the first thing on the mind of all relatives and they ask Dr. Deepak what will happen to my patient. Now just by labeling a patient based on his GCS, admission GCS I'm talking about, as a severe head injury already I can write down the outcome of the patient. 30% of the patients with severe head injury will die in hospital. That is how bad this problem is. 
another 40% will remain vegetative for life. What is vegetative? Vegetative is a patient which is not responding to commands unconscious but can open eyes and look around but not fix case. So these patients keep lying on the bed for life and they have to be fed. They will eat also but they are like a vegetable. They do not respond to anything. So it is a life worse than death. We are left with only 30% of the patients who will go back to society and may be independent to a certain degree. But remember, they will never be normal. They will continue to have major deficits, mood changes, calculation problems, cognitive issues, which will remain throughout life. So do not take any head injury lightly. What is the long term outcome? That is another once we discharge patients from the hospital, the lucky 30% ones, relatives ask, will he improve? Yes, definitely patients will continue to improve, but only to a certain extent or to a, up to a certain time. Generally accepted is improvement occurs up to six months in adult patients. In children, however, this is different because their brains are very plastic and improvement can be seen up to two years also. Now, most important again is I will end with the final words is that obviously nobody can accept a patient not coming back to the pre head injury levels and there is no solution to this problem currently. I know of cases in which the doctors did a very good job and the patient could be discharged but although he was conscious there were so many mood changes, anger, change in appetite that is it is almost like being dependent on the caregiver which is obviously your parents, your spouse, your children and I remember there was a colonel from the army whose only son got injured, had a severe head injury and they got him to AIMS and we did a, as we are supposed to do all the treatment and we could discharge the patient and he was uh, conscious moving around which we consider as a good outcome but he was very violent, he became very violent over time and his appetite increased because of the effects of head injury and his parents were finding it more and more difficult to take care of him. And the father actually filed a case against Ames that why did they save my child? And he said that because I am old, there is no one else to look after him. How, what will happen to him after we die? So these are certain problems uh, without any kind of a social support system in India. It becomes extremely complex to handle and as doctors we find it sometimes very difficult to you know balance out the emotions expectations and the outcomes i think that uh, dhram sankat is always there within us and although we want to do the best on this other side we also cannot act like gods and deciding that yes let let this patient go we are always and always been trained to do the best possible and that is something which uh, the final outcome is never in our hands. So only way, only way to treat head injury is to prevent it. And I think despite all the literature, despite all the media, people do not understand the significance. Wearing helmets, safe driving, making sure that you avoid all kinds of, uh, you know, issues which may lead to a head injury is the best, safest and the most consistent way to avoid any kind of injury. Because your brain is the most important part of your body and unless you yourself take care of it, don't expect the doctors to do miracles on you. Thank you so much.